Now we'll look at my favorite tool when it comes to summarizing, slicing, dicing data sets. Using subtotal functional filtering, we can actually answer some, some questions. Using the sum if and count of function, we can answer some questions about this data. But the most versatile way of looking at this data from different ways is using pivot tables. Let's say I wanted to look at how much money each person spent or how much money we spent on each week or what was spent on each food item or more detailed questions. Can we look at weekly expenditures by each person? All these questions can be answered using pivot tables. In order to create a pivot table, you need to be anywhere within your data set. Then you go to the insert ribbon. In the insert ribbon, you choose the pivot table option. See, since you are inside your data set, it will automatically highlight your entire data set as the range to be analyzed. And it asks you whether you want the pivot table in a new worksheet or in an existing one. Usually in this window, I don't change anything. I just simply click OK. When you hit OK, you see a blank pivot table here and you see your fields, who, when, what, how much. So let's first get the how much and put it under values. This gets you the fact that you spend a total of $511. But this is not really a very detailed piece of information. If I wanted to figure out who spent how much of this $511, I can pick up the who here and put it in rows. And that shows me that, oh, well, there were three people, Özgür, Tam, and VJ, and this is how much each person spent. If I didn't want a table that is vertical like this and I wanted a horizontal table, I could have picked up the who and moved it to columns. And now I get the same information in a horizontal format. So this is a one-dimensional table. Instead of doing who, I could have done when. Oh, this is how much money was spent in each week. Or I could have done what? How much money was spent on each item? All these three are one-dimensional tables. If I want, I can also create two-dimensional tables here. Let's say how much money was spent on food items by different people. Then I pick up the who and put it in columns. And I see that, well, let's see. Özgür never spent any money on cars. And VJ spent $125 on food. It's a complete breakdown of what's going on. A two-dimensional table can be in this format, or you can actually do both attributes in the same orientation. A complete vertical table here. We can have one-dimensional tables, we can have two-dimensional tables. On top of it, we can actually have three-dimensional tables. Let's say I wanted to look at who spent money on what in which week, then I can pick up my when and put it under filters here. So by default, I get the view of all four weeks. If I want to choose a particular week, I click here and then I pick up, let's say, week two. And this shows me who spent money on what in week two. So this is a three-dimensional table, but since it would be very hard to visualize it in three dimensions, Excel shows us two-dimensional slices of it. And if you want, you can actually select multiple weeks as well by enabling select multiple items option here. So I'm going to get rid of the third dimension. One thing to watch out with pivot tables is if you would like to do further operations on a pivot table, it's best that you copy the table and paste it special as values only somewhere else. Because here's what happens. If I try to write a formula based on one of these pivot table values, when I try to give a cell reference, I get this 
fairly long statement which is actually very hard to copy paste. So if I would like to play around with these values it's better to copy the pivot table and paste it somewhere else values only and then you can do your further analysis. Usually when you click out of a pivot table by the way your pivot table dialog box disappears but when you click back inside the pivot table you get your dialog box again. The other thing that I wanted to point out is if you're dealing with a numeric cell and you put it under values you will usually get a sum but what if you wanted to look at a max or a minimum or a count instead of the summation of the values then here's what you do you click on this field and you choose value field settings and you're right now summarizing value field by sum if you want you can get count if you do count this shows us that there are 24 total transactions out of the 24 three was three transactions were by Osgur and they were on, on beer and Tom had three transactions that were correlated etc so let's go back and make it some again there are other options here too I recommend that you spend a lot of time playing around with a pivot table if you haven't ever worked with pivot tables before because they do come in very handy so we have our values here well let's say somebody asks you well I see the $62 that was spent on cars by Tom but I want to have a relative sense of how much was it of our overall expenditure of the 511 so if you want to do that if you get percentages instead of actual values you can do that as well so again you go under values you click on your uh, field and then you go to value field settings instead of looking at the summarize values by option you go to show values as option and by default you have no calculations here you just get the sum but if you click here you can say oh I wanna get the results as a percentage of the grand total or the column total or the row total uh, several options here that may come in very handy I'm gonna choose the grand total one and hit OK now what do I get here let's make it a little bit bigger well 100% was the total expenditure uh, let's say VJ total spent almost 50% of the money or whereas Osgur spent only 20% of the money if you look at the uh, money spent on car it was only 15% if you look at Tom's expenditures in car it was 12% of the total expenditure so this kind of relative comparison might come in very handy as well again pivot tables are a big time saver and I'd like you to play around with this a lot uh, but this is the basics that you need if you want to look at other options I recommend that you go to pivot tables tools option here under analyze play around with all these options and under design you can look at different ways of visualizing the pivot tables